Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Brad, call sign Captain Wingnut. Have you ever wondered if you can mix oil and water? Maybe you have a mechanical project that needs help. Maybe you have a recipe that needs help. The answer is yes, you can mix oil and water. I'll show you how in just a moment. Okay, so the answer is yes, you can mix oil and water and keep them mixed without separation. All you need is an emulsifier. By the way, if you like the content of my videos, click the subscribe button, and if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified every time I release another video. So what's an emulsifier? An emulsifier is a stabilizer or a surfactant for aqueous solutions. Aqueous, a scientific word for liquid. Like medicines and food, recipes. It helps components that do not mix stay together, dissolve, and play together. Many emulsifiers also help emulsions mix into each other. Emulsion, a mixture of two or more liquids that are normally unmixable. In some recipes, you don't need a liquid emulsifier because there's already something that does the job, like making a cake. You add oil, you add water to the recipe, and the flour becomes the emulsifier. It mixes it and keeps it all together. Honey is also an emulsifier. At times we need to get our honeybee colonies to take vitamins and probiotics to strengthen their colonies. So we have to entice them with something that they really like, and that is peppermint and cinnamon. The smell of peppermint and cinnamon really attracts honeybees because it's one of their favorite foods. The problem is that pure peppermint and cinnamon oil do not mix with the nectar, the sugar water that we put the vitamins and the probiotics into. So, we have to use science to mix them and get them to stay together. So for this, this example, I'm gonna use honey as an emulsifier. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a tiny little bit of honey, just an itty bitty tiny bit of honey here. And we're gonna put some oil in this and about three drops of peppermint oil. We're gonna put about three drops of, of cinnamon oil. And then we're going to mix them up in this honey. It's not really gonna look like it's mixing up, but it is. It's, it's mixing up very, very well. And when we add water to this, what happens is it'll go milky in color because the honey is emulsifying the oil into the water. And there you have it. There's the honey emulsifying into the water. So let's take it over to a pot and uh, put it into the water. And I'll, I'll put a drop or two of oil on the water so that you can see how it... Um, floats and repels, and then how this works. Okay, so I've adjusted the camera so everything else is uh, whited out so you can really see in this pot. And we've got the, we've got the water with the, with the honey and uh, oil, and I'm going to just put some water in this. Oh, first of all, let's show you what happens if I drip some water or drip some oil on the water. And you see that floating? Let's see if I can zoom in so that you can see that oil floating right there. Right there. See the oil is floating? Okay. Watch the magic that honey can do. We'll just add some water to this and wash it out of this little container into there. Then we'll stir it all up. And the bubbles will go away and you'll see that there's no oil floating on the surface. How about that? Okay, let me see if I can get this closer so that you can see. There's no oil floating on the surface there. Mm-hmm. Emulsifiers. For my next example, I'm gonna use polysorbate 80. 
a very commonly used emulsifier for food, medicines, and cosmetics. Let me stop right here and level the playing field. There will be some of you that ride your high horses around yelling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and you may have qualms about polysorbate 80, the dreaded tomato addiction, aluminum pots, plastic containers, or bees disappearing from the world. If you're one of these controlling parasites who just can't help yourself and you think you need to lecture me and my viewers with your radical one-sided opinions about polysorbate 80 or whatever you're banging your drum about today, this is not the forum for that. Polysorbates have been recognized by the FDA as generally safe since 1967, so none of us here want to hear your abstract somebody said half-baked theories and rumors about it or any other controversy that you're writing. If you're a scientist, publish it on your own channel. Make a scientific periodical. If you're not a scientist and you want to babble about how you hate it, start a blog. Open your own YouTube channel and make a vlog. If you don't like what you're hearing or seeing, you're totally free to leave and stop watching. No one forced you to play this video. No one has you handcuffed to the desk. No one has your eyes propped open and makes you watch this. And no one's forcing you to stay. Just leave and don't make controlling nasty comments and try to lecture us about your idiocracies because you think it's safe to hide behind your computer and some avatar that really isn't your own name. If you have an opinion, put your face on camera, let everyone know who you are and state your point of view. This is my channel, and this is what I do. If you don't like it, you're totally free to leave. Here's a secret that most people don't know, and I'm going to let it out of the bag. YouTube has given successful channels like mine the ability to hide your comments from everyone but you. You still see them, and you still think they're there, but they're not. No one else will see them except you and me. So if you find the need to condescend and lecture and try to control people and force your way upon us, leave now and refrain from making a comment. I'll just hide it and block you. So stop the negative. I'm going to use polysorbate 80, peppermint oil, and a batch of one-to-one -one sugar water that we feed our honeybees with. So this is what it looks like putting drops of oil on sugar water, you can see that the oil just floats. Let's mix it with an emulsifier. So now I'm going to mix the peppermint and the cinnamon oils with one third of a dropper, which is about three drops of polysorbate 80, and then show you how that oil mixture mixes perfectly into the water. Now the FDA approved usage rate is between 1 and 50 percent polysorbate 80 for foods and cosmetic products. By the way, this tiny amount of oil and uh, polysorbate 80 is diluted into five gallons of sugar nectar. I'm going to use this little votive candle holder that you normally throw away and I'm going to put in a full dropper of cinnamon oil and I'm going to put in a full dropper of peppermint oil. You saw me drop that on the sugar solution, the bees nectar. Then I'm going to take polysorbate 80, which is an emulsifier, and I'm going to put just about a third of a dropper in it. I'm going to stir it up with a chopstick. And then we'll go pour it in the sugar water. And you'll watch the drops that are floating on the sugar water disappear. It'll emulsify them right into it. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. And I'll just pour this emulsified oil right in. And you see it just takes those drops that were floating on there with it and it's just emulsified. Now when I add water to this, so you can see it's just a, a milky color that comes out of a little votive dish. 
and it just mixes right in mixes right in with that sugar water so now that's emulsified oil or an oil emulsifier and oh if you could smell that right now oh boy cinnamon and peppermint the bees are gonna love it so you can see that uh, my way of mixing the uh, polysorbate 80 into the oil first or the honey into the oil first substantially reduces this concentration of the of this emulsifier needed in nectar versus adding the oil and nectar together and then adding enough emulsifier to get them all to combine you just don't need that much and it's expensive so that's how i mix oil and water i'm glad we had this time together brad call sign captain wingnut signing off das vidanya oh is that cowboy talk